Um, so I could kind of, let me see if I can find a shot where this is. You can do any of the tool set on any of it within those and then track them. So say, for instance, her face was a little out of focus. If you needed to sharpen up just what's in that, in that oval and then move with just her face, you have that option. You can diffuse it. You can, uh, you can do basically just the surrounding area or the in, inside of it. And, and you, can, you can use additional shapes to cut off parts that you may not want there. So for example, um, in this shot here, which I'll go back out a little, little further, um, this was a challenging one because as you see, she's walk I have subjects walking in front of her and uh, that will obviously throw the track off. So I'll show you how I went about around that. So I use the, the automatic tracker so we'll just do the rest of it from here. Um, let's get back over to track. So I'm going to track forward. Uh, I'll do it on the mouse so you guys can see. So as you can see, we, that, that uh, interrupted it. So now you're thinking, do I have to keyframe the rest of the whole scene? Well, no, you can, you can use um, keyframes along with the tracker. So Let's go to right about here. I'm just going to advance right to where we like it. And I'm going to create a mark, which is, let me see on the, I'm used to it on this panel, but um, I'm gonna, okay, here we are. So we're at mark right there. So basically I've set a keyframe right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to advance just a little bit further to where we got a good, nice size of her face again. And then I'm going to create a new mark and then I'm going to use I'm going to manually move this window back to where where we where we want this light to stay, and then I'm going to mark the um, the actually let me turn this on just so you can visually see this. So these are the track points that it's doing. But basically, I set one mark and one mark out, and then I'm going to interpolate between. So now that when I play through that, you can see from the first mark point. Let's see. Let me mark that and move this to here. So that would also work once you have your track set, then you can come into back into your color and you can set keyframes here so that you can dial down the color as it's passing her and then and then brightening it back up as she moves out of the object. In this case, what I was doing was I have such a, a, a feathered effect that I don't really mind if, if she gets lit a little as she passes over her, but uh, you certainly can do that if you, if you wanted to. Um, so, so again, I'll try to represent this. I'm going to do a mark. I'm going to move forward. It's right about there. I'm going to set another mark and do a, a, a uh, oh, sorry, I'm going to put it there and then interpolate that between. So now it should stay with her as she goes across and then catch back up to her so that uh, as we play through this. And then, you know, if I needed to keyframe throughout the rest of the scene, um, I can just start track back up again and follow to the next object and then repeat the same steps. So you can really do, let it do a lot of the auto work for you and then saves you a lot of the time doing it manually that way. Um, so so uh, that's, this is sort of like, that's kind of more of like where you get into more detailed work there. Sure. Yeah, let me let me maybe explain all the different node options that you do have, um, and how the the ordering of them will matter. So um, basically, a serial node, which is just um, you know your basic node that you can do all your color correction work in, um, and that's usually where I start out about here. Um, 
And uh, let me again just sort of disable these so you can kind of see where I was starting from and where I ended. I'm just gonna. Okay, so that's our base starting point. So I added some contrast here and, and, uh, and then warmed it up and added a slightly more contrast, but really what I wanted to do was, was work on some of this, uh, uh, this uh, front area of the frame. So what I did was I, I added a, a parallel node, which was basically bypassing this one and looking at the one before, and they're working in, in unison. Um, so now I can then work individually on, the, on this foreground object here. And in here I'm working on the center part of this image right here that I just wanted to kind of put a little bit more contrast into it. And then as you see, there's another layer up here where I'm just kind of blowing up the sky. So I'm basically dissecting the whole shot as it happens. And uh, this is playing through dissolve, so I'm just gonna fast forward through it. And luckily, this in this case, it's a locked off shot, so the, the, the objects aren't moving, but I could certainly track these as well. So um, I'm not sure if that answered your question, but I'm, I'm basically working, I, the way I like to think about it is like in Photoshop is that you stack your layers in a certain way to get your desired effect, so. Um, I could further demonstrate that by just showing you what exactly it's working on there. Um, so you can s so um, it really allows you a lot of control over you know any sort of uh, you know kind of color decision that you're trying to do. Um, and maybe I didn't go over too much about down here, but this is the whole timeline laid out. Um, this will show you if you have any audio in here. You can you can see your waveform if you have to adjust because you can play, uh, you can color correct while hearing your audio. Um, and th this um, view here is just basically showing you a thumbnail representation of each clip in your timeline. So um, as you can see, if I click on here, it is now selected the shot that my playhead's over. Um, down in this section, this is where you're doing all your, your general, you might be familiar with this through like three-way color corrector. So you have your blacks, your individual control over red, green, and blue, your mids, and your highlights, and all your saturation, hue, uh, luma, um, all your controls if you needed to resize the frame, um, do that sort of thing. Um, and in this tab, which was, um, a lot of people asked for was basically showing you this the familiar color wheel that you're used to in through a color corrector. So you can kind of take your knowledge from Final Cut and and start it, um, you know, continue it on from here and then go into some of the more advanced tool sets. So, um, in and uh, as well as the channels. So if you're if you're used to working with curves, you have all that control here. So uh, it, you know, for example, if I wanted to, you know, on the high end maybe put some more red into it and, and uh, you know, pull some blue out of the low end, you're, you're, you have that graphical way of doing it. Um, now qualifier, this is where you're gonna do some of your, your really key selections. So uh, for example, let me bring in a new node, which I'm just gonna add. And um, you can start by working in, you, you, this is hue, uh, saturation, and lightness. And I'm just gonna use the color picker and say, for example, I really wanted to work on this grass here. So I can click here, and as you can see, that's what it sampled. I can click and drag and, and further increase that selection and then use some of these controls here to really try to fine tune this area. I can then further that by putting in some sort of um, window shape. So I can add a, say we, we like this selection more or less. We just want to kind of cut off everything else that we don't want it to have. So we can, you can come in here and work with, these are the different sort of window options. You have circular windows, linear, polygon, or curve. I'll kind of go over each one of those. So your rectangular curve, you can then you know, four corner each one of those and say maybe you just wanted to limit this, this area out of what, what we wanted to grab in this grass. So you can grab that and, uh, and then we'll just 
add a bit of blur just to kind of round off all those little pixels that we're grabbing. And then we can, you know, change these any any sort of way we want and really kind of isolate those. And as you can see, they're contained in this node so that you can build upon this or restack these to have different effects to it. So um, the difference with, with these two um, options are, I'll just show you a curve shape. This is if you wanted to make your own custom custom shape of like, you know, different shaped objects. So if we needed to come in here and let me just get that bigger and really get it close to where we needed to to make our our custom shape, that's where you would use this tool. And uh, you can then, once you have this really nice cutout, you can then use the 3D tracker to stay with this object as well. So, um, I'm sorry? You can, you can set your own points uh, for sure. So maybe I should show you that. Uh, let me come back over to here. So let's say, uh, let's do this. Okay, so. Uh, let me get out of this option. I don't know if there's any m motion in this shot. Let's see first if that's the case. Okay, there is. So let's do this. Put. So let's turn on a power window. We will put them, put it right over these two people. You can, you could, if you wanted to, you can uh, use the uh, the curve tool to actually, you know, very finely tune, um, create a, a mat right just over them. It will usually, those kind of shapes take, a, take some time to do, but um, so anyways, uh, I'm just gonna set this on top of them and I will just, I'm just gonna soften this up a little and kind of really keep it, say like we just wanted to take them down just a bit. Something like that. And uh, we'll, we'll come back over to the tracker and we will track forward. It's, and if we, went, if we wanted to do from the top of the shot, you can just start at the top of the shot or you can uh, start from any place and then track forward or in reverse depending on, you know, what you, what your, the nature of the shot is. Um, so getting back to that point where if, uh, you know, say these plot points, I don't, I don't like what they, what it automatically grabbed, I can delete these. And, um, and then you can bring up this cursor and say if I wanted to set this point on this, this particular corner, I can say set point and then you should see a uh, point just added there. So you can, you can set all your points specifically, which um, a good example of that is if you're trying to track, like say a, a TV screen and there's objects in it, the tracker will go kind of you know, interpret those and go kind of crazy. So if you just want the four corners, you can just put your four corner points and then have it track just on that point, so, uh, those points, so. Um, uh, that's a very simple way of doing it. Um, so here's an example too I can show you that uh, like in, in, in this particular layer here, um, I'm really trying to just preserve just as much shadow detail in here and not really lose a lot of this highlight. So what I, ha this layer is, has one correction and then this key mixer is basically um, allowing just this area to show through and all the black area to only work on this layer. Um, so as you can see there, she's really in shadow, but if I wanted to just bring up just her enough, I'm not sure if that's coming up there, but just enough to see her and, uh, and still have that real sunset look that I did on my normal grade. This is sort of kind of a structure for that. Um, 
So that's, that's I'm not sure how more detailed you want to get with, with color correction or if that's um, enough to get your feet wet and, tr and try the program. Yeah, well the one thing I wanted to also show you was how you kind of get this back to Final Cut um, or, or for that matter anything. So this is the render tab that you can bring up and as you can see, you ha once you've done your whole, whole session, you, you have it all, all your color grades here. Um, there's a very easy way of getting it back now which is Final Cut XML round trip. So what that does is it basically um, makes sure that your file names and your, your time code and your, your real numbers uh, carry through into these rendered clips. So from there you can set it to any output Kodak that you want to. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I did it on this panel, but uh, from where you would do it on here, you can do it from session, render, and that'll bring up this, this panel. You can set, like, so for example, if you want to do just a selection of your timeline, you can mark in and outs of where you want to render from. You can do select all, which will do the whole timeline. Um, from there, you would just basically set the directory where you want your renders to go to. So um, I've obviously rendered this, this material in advance, um, but um, it, it's an extremely fast rendering process. Um, you know, on my typical system, which is a kind of beefed up more Mac Pro tower, um, I'm, I'm getting real time plus on, on most anything, so um, uh, at HD quality, that is. Um, so once, once everything renders, you can then come back to your conform page and then export an XML. So you would just write your XML to you wherever you would want it to. And um, if I flip back over to Final Cut, you can do export, or I'm sorry, import XML, locate your, your XML file that, that DaVinci uh, produced and ingest that in.